so here is one more important question which is there in the model paper question number 8b that is derive the equations for magnetic circuits with the suitable diagram okay so here draw one diagram where the voltage source here is uh, in, in terms of magnetic circuit it is represented as em okay and here is the phi flowing uh, flux flowing through this magnetic circuit along with the resistance then consider a magnetic circuit em is equal to n times i that is equal to line integral of h dot dl since uh, uh, line integral of h dot dl is equal to i when we this relation we are getting it when we are solving for ampere's law and here uh, so that's why uh, ni is equal to line integral of h dot dl where this n represents the number of turns in a particular circuit okay we know that in general r is equal to v by i in terms of electric circuits so that's why for magnetic circuits this is uh, r is equal to em by phi okay and it is measured in amperes per paper where this r here in this case we are uh, calling it as reluctance okay yeah so here this is called as reluctance this is the magnetic circuit and the required equation which we are getting from amperes law number of turns okay then uh, reluctance then here we have some more equations you know for magnetic circuits we can uh, note it down there are few equations we want to note it down that is j is equal to sigma times e b is equal to mu times h del dot b is equal to 0 del dot h is equal to a i is equal to surface integral of j dot ds where this j is called as a current density phi is equal to uh, surface integral of b dot ds and t is equal to mu s by l okay where this l s is the l is the length and s is the surface of the magnetic so magnetic surface bounded by the region of magnetic circuits okay so this was the answer for this magnetic circuits okay pause the video and note it down okay yeah also if you want to refer the videos uh, related to magnetic boundary conditions we have uh, created a playlist of all the conceptual videos of this subject you can go to that playlist and you can check the video of magnetic boundary conditions also it might be appearing in the top right of your screen now okay you can note it down and you can click that video and you can uh, go there and watch it so let so this is the next question one more the simple question a conductor 4 meter long lies along the y axis with a current of 10 ampere in a y direction okay so here they have mentioned the direction as well in this question that is a by direction find the force of on the conductor if the field in the region is uh, b is equal to 0 0.005 ax tesla okay so here they have given the magnetic field uh, conductor what to say magnetic field region the value of magnetic field they have mentioned it here okay and also they have told the value of current and also they have mentioned that they, it is moving in a y direction okay so according to the question we have a relation for force that is i is equal, force is equal to i times l cross b okay and the value of l is 4 meter also they have mentioned in a y direction so we can write it as value of l as 4 a y Okay. the current is 10 amperes the value of uh, magnet or uh, magnetic field is 0 0.005 ax so now first compute l cross b that is 4 a y cross 0 0.005 ax so unit vectors a y and ax so these are these two are in a not they, they are not in clockwise direction they are opposite direction so that's why the resultant vector obtained is minus a z vector okay and 0 0.005 into 4 is 0 0.02 yeah so that's why this is the value of l cross b obtained that is minus 0 0.02 az okay now substitute this l cross b back in this equation that is f is equal to i times l cross b so the value of i in the question is 10 ampere so 10 into minus 0 0.02 az vector so 0 0.02 into 10 is f so the value final value of f is minus 0 0.2 az newtons okay so this is the final value of force here obtained so this was one simple question of from model paper so it carries around uh, four to five marks it might be coming okay so please uh, note it down so hello everyone welcome to this new session so in this session we are going to discuss with the uh, we are going to continue with module 5 only and we are going to discuss one more concept which is related to uniform plane wave okay that is the movement of electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity is uh, uniformly distributed along the surface okay what is the relationship between them when they are moving in a uniform field or uniform plane wave okay so first thing is first the definition of uniform plane wave uniform plane wave is defined as in these four points that is first point is 
electric uh, field and magnetic electric field intensity and magnetic field density are uniform in nature with respect to uniform plane wave second point is that e and h are perpendicular to each other third point is that e and h are on plane are, are in one single plane okay both the electric field and magnetic field are induced in a single plane okay in that single plane its condition is that it needs to be uniform in nature okay and this e and h are perpendicular to the direction of propagation okay in this figure you can see these are the directions of propagations here which uh, this uh, indicating arrow these are the directions of propagations okay so now let's see the, the what is this concept of uniform plane wave so let e be in y direction and h be in z direction okay that is electric field and magnetic field let it be in y and z direction respectively okay and let x be in the direction of propagation okay so this is the direction of propagation here x so e is equal to in generally ex ax plus ey ay plus ez az same goes for h okay so now a uniform plane wave that is upw in free space for free space we have some conditions that is mu is equal to mu naught epsilon is equal to epsilon naught and uh, sigma equal to zero as same goes with jc is equal to sigma times c is equal to zero okay the conduction current density conductivity and uh, permittivity would be in free space that is uh, mu naught and epsilon naught so now let's consider the maxwell's equation that is del cross e is equal to minus dou b by dou t so this relation which you have got from faraday's law consider that equation and here in this case b is equal to mu times h but uh, in free space mu equal to mu naught so that's why minus mu naught dou h by dou t since b is equal to mu naught h okay so now this is this del cross e substitute it take the determinant that is a ax ay az dou by dou x dou by dou y dou by dou z zero e by zero okay since uh, we are considering uh, upw with e in y direction and h in z direction okay since we have considered this uh, e in y direction here so that's why since we have a del cross e so that's why the y component would only be activated the rest of the two components would be zero so that's why these two are zero that's equal to mu naught dou by dou t of h z okay because i have taken h in z direction right so that's why this h would be replaced by h z into a z vector these two components would be neglected only this component would be left out okay and x is the direction of propagation so that's why e x equal to e z equal to zero h x equal to h y equal to zero okay because we have taken uh, e in y direction and h in z direction so that's why the rest of the two components are equal to zero okay so now after taking its determinant so this is the expression which you are getting that is dou by dou x of e y into a z vector is equal to minus mu naught dou by dou t of h z into a z vector a z a z vector you can cancel it out from both sides so the remaining term is dou by dou x of e y is equal to minus mu naught dou by dou t of h z okay so whatever this equation you've got you name it as equation one so this is the plane wave equation which we've obtained when we take the electric field and magnetic field in a direction along with the direction of propagation in a particular direction that is y in this case the electric field is in y direction and magnetic field is in z direction so that's why if we see the relationship between them using the maxwell's equation for uniform plane wave in free space so this is the equation which we obtain okay so that's why you can name it as equation one because this is further many more steps are there for this but for in case of only for uniform plane wave propagation okay if they ask this much is enough to write from here till here this one full page in, is enough okay if they ask for uh, uh, 10 marks or something still more further derivation is there so that's why i have named it as equation one so now next what would be uh, what would be happening let's see that now so this is a continuation of the derivation only just a different heading that is maxwell's equation from ampere's law Maxwell's equation from Ampere's law. Okay, so we have derived one Maxwell's equation from Ampere's law that is del cross h is equal to J C plus J D, right? Where this J C is the conduction current density, and J D is the dis displacement current density. That is again equal to epsilon times dou e by dou t. Okay, since J C is equal to sigma times e, but for a uh, sigma times e, but for in uh, free space we have considered this sigma equal to zero, right? So that's why this whole term would be equal to zero. we are left with only this term that is epsilon not dou e by dou t so this is not equal to zero because we have one uh, term that is dou by dou t of uh, with respect to electric field so we cannot make this term equal to zero okay so now 
In last case, we have considered Maxwell's equation for electric field. Same in this case, we are considering Maxwell's equation from Ampere's law in magnetic field. And take the determinant of that Ax, Ay, Az, dou by dou x, dou by dou by dou by Joz. And this and this would be equal to zero because we have taken the uh, magnetic field in z direction. So that's why we are getting only hz. Same goes with the right hand side epsilon times epsilon naught dou by dou t of e y. E is equal to e y here because we have taken this e in y direction so that's why e y a cap y so again same thing take the determinant so this is the term if you which you obtain after taking the determinant that is minus dou by dou y of hz a y vector is equal to uh, minus epsilon naught dou by dou t of e y a y vector so this a y vector and a y vector gets cancelled so remaining term this minus and minus also gets cancelled so here this is plus okay so that's why dou hz by dou y is equal to epsilon naught dou by dou t of e by okay so this equation we have got from uh, maxwell's equation from ampere's law but similarly for equation one we have got for maxwell's equation in for with re with respect to free space in by using uh, faraday's law okay so name the, those equations as equation one this is equation one and equation two then differentiate equation one with respect to x and equation 2 with respect to t okay what you would be getting if we differentiate equation 1 with respect to s we would be getting dou square e y by dou x square is equal to minus mu naught dou by dou x of dou by dou t of h z okay that is 1 by mu naught i am taking this uh, mu naught to other side that is minus 1 by mu naught of dou square e y by dou x square is equal to dou by dou x of dou by dou t of h z so now name this as equation 3 okay so now what we are doing is dou by dou t of dou by dou x of hz is equal to minus epsilon naught dou square e y by dou t square okay i am replacing this uh, so for this equation as we have got it from uh, equation 2 where we are de uh, differentiating, differentiating it with respect to t okay so when we differentiate this equation with respect to t so this is the equation which we obtain okay and we differentiate when we differentiate equation 1 with respect to x this is the equation which we obtain so now what we can see is RHS of equation 3 and LHS of equation 4 are same. Okay. So therefore LHS of 3 and RHS of 4 are equal. Since uh, the RHS and LHS of equation 3 and 4 are same that is dou by dou x uh, into dou by dou t of hz is equal to dou by dou t into dou by dou x of hz. These two are inter interrelated that's it. But so we can what we can do is we can equate the other two terms. Okay. That is my uh, minus 1 by mu naught into dou square e y by dou x square is equal to minus epsilon naught dou square e y by dou t square where this minus and minus would be getting cancelled so therefore 1 by mu naught of dou square e y by dou x square is equal to epsilon naught dou square e y by dou t square so therefore dou square e y by uh, dou t square is equal to 1 by mu naught into epsilon naught i am bringing here mu naught into epsilon naught divided by dou square e y by dou x square so now this equation which you have got here so this is wave equation in terms of electric field okay so this is the wave equation here which we have got in terms of electric field similarly we can derive the wave equation in terms of magnetic field okay by interchanging few of the terms that is what we can do is so if we check this uh, equation whatever we got dimensionally that is dou square ey by dou t square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught dou square ey by dou x square okay so we know that ey that is electric field okay let's take its si unit that is volts per meter right that i have written here v by m divided by t square okay that is times square and si unit of time is second so this we are taking it as second square same thing here that is 1 by mu naught epsilon naught keep it as it is again e y that is volts per meter divided by x square okay x uh, uh, represents the distance right distance or displacement its unit is meter and here we should be writing it as meter square okay so that is 1 by s square so here we can cancel v by m v by m from both sides 1 by s square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught divided by 1 by meter square so bring this meter square to the other side so meter square by s square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught so we know that meter per second what is meter per second velocity right 
that is the velocity so that's why m square by s square is equal to v square v square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught so therefore v is equal to 1 by square root of mu naught epsilon naught if is where mu naught and epsilon naught I have told you right permittivity in free space and permeability in free space it has fixed values so if we substitute that values and if we check the dimensionally the equation of uh, wave uh, the wave equation that is what we are getting is the standard value of velocity of light which you might be knowing that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second okay if we substitute the value of mu naught epsilon naught, if you want you can check it substitute the values of mu naught and epsilon naught in this equation and this is the answer we are getting 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so therefore we can say that uniform plane wave travels with the velocity of light okay so this dimensional conclusion why I have done because in order to conclude this statement that is uniform plane wave travels with the velocity of flight. Similarly what we can do is replace uh, Ey by Hz that is in place of magnetic field that is dou square Hz by dou t square is equal to V square dou square Hz by dou h square okay where this V square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught okay I've got it here derived it here dimensionally right so therefore in place of 1 by mu naught epsilon naught now when you are replacing electric field by magnetic field in place of 1 by mu naught epsilon naught write it as v square dou square hz so again in place of ey replace it by hz okay divided by dou x square okay so this is the equation wave equation in terms of h okay similarly again wave equation in terms of e how we can write dou square ey by dou t square is equal to v square dou square ey by dou x square okay so this is the simplified form for wave equation in in terms of e okay where this v square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught okay and if we solve this v square the, the standard value of velocity of propagation of light is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second this which you have might be heard before okay so these are the two wave equations which you have got in terms of e sorry in terms of electric field as well as in terms of magnetic field whenever we have any direction of propagation mentioned okay in free space these and all are thing in free space not in a particular medium in free space okay so that's all so here one more uh, derivation we are going to see that is intrinsic impedance that is the relationship between this ey and hz in free space okay what is the relationship and what are the expressions which we are going to get so now let's see that as well so this is the next concept that is intrinsic impedance of free space okay so again same thing consider maxwell's equation from faraday's law which we have obtained that is del cross e is equal to minus dou b by dou t is equal to again b is equal to mu times h so that's why minus mu naught into dou h by dou t so now what we, for a uniform plane wave with the electric field e in y direction and h in z direction and let x be the direction of propagation which we have taken for a, our uniform plane wave while we are defining only we have taken it that is a e in y direction h in z direction and x be the direction of propagation so what we can conclude is ex is equal to ez is equal to hx is equal to hy is equal to zero right i thought we have already discussed that so now what we can do is del cross e again take the determinant and uh, write it like this is equal to mu naught into dou hz because we are taking h in z direction again we have to write dou hz by dou t into a z vector okay and again while simplifying this determinant we are getting dou ey by dou x into a z divided by minus is equal to minus mu naught dou hz by dou t into az so we can cancel this az so dou ey by dou x is equal to minus mu naught dou hz by dou t okay this equation whatever we got name it as equation 1 so now what we can do is this ey and hz components are there right in order to find the relationship between them we can uh, replace this ey and hz by e naught into e to the power j into omega t minus beta x okay and hz is equal to h0 into e to the power j into omega t minus beta x okay in place of ey and hz replace it by these two terms and uh, name this as equation 2 and equation 3 now substitute these two equations equation 2 and 3 in equation 1 in this equation that is dou by dou x of in place of ey write e0 e to the power j omega t plus minus beta x 
is equal to minus mu naught into dou by dou t of h z in place of h z right h naught e to the power j omega t minus beta x so now what we can do is we need to take the der partial der derivation on both sides that is dou by dou x derivative of this equation with respect to x so that's why what what it what it would be happening is this is constant now this we need to be writing as it is then e to the power j omega t minus beta x uh, its the derivative is this term only so this term again write it as it is and now do by do x with respect to x so now what this term would be equal to zero okay omega t would be zero and beta x so coefficient of x is minus beta and we have one j outside so if we multiply j and beta we are getting minus j beta right that you write it outside minus j beta that is minus j beta into epsilon naught e to the power j omega t minus beta x is equal to again minus mu naught write it here as it is then dou by dou t of this term so now we need to derive with deriving with respect to t that is this term again this h naught is constant keep it outside and this uh, the derivative of this term is this term itself and again with respect to t so this term would be zero and we have omega t coefficient of t is omega and we have here multiply j so j into omega is j omega and here we have one minus sign outside so that's why minus j omega okay so that's why minus j beta and minus j omega those two are the complex terms so we can cancel them out okay that is minus j here and minus j here we can cancel it out so now what we are left with beta into e not e to the power j omega t minus beta x and in this side we have omega into mu naught h naught into e to the power j into omega t minus beta x okay so if we see here h naught and e naught now we can replace this again by the this term only that is e y and h z in place of these two terms so now our equation is beta into e y is equal to omega mu naught into h z so e y by h z bring it to one side since we are finding the relationship between these two things so that's why e y by h z is equal to omega mu naught by beta okay where this uh, e y by h z now it would be equal to c into mu naught so now what is this c here which we've got that we can write it as omega by beta okay omega by beta equal to c and this value of c is called as the velocity of propagation of light okay velocity of light propagation and its formula is given as c is equal to omega by beta from this derivation we have got this expression as well that is c is equal to omega by beta you can note it down so therefore what we are getting in place of omega by beta replace it by c so e y by h z is equal to c into mu naught okay so this is the relationship between e y and h z okay if you want you can stop it here only but if you want to find the value fixed value okay what we can do is we can further derive this equation that is what we have got e y by h z is equal to c into mu naught so now what we can do is this c is a velocity of propagation of light right right but in free space so now this is in free space okay in free space if we consider the same equation e y by h z is equal to c into mu naught but in free space we have the relation of c that is c square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught right so therefore c is equal to 1 by square root of mu naught epsilon naught right in free space okay velocity of light has a standard value of 3 into 10 power 8 seconds so now in free space what we can do is replace this c by 1 by square root of mu naught epsilon naught into mu naught so now you know in order to cancel this mu naught in the denominator we know that mu naught is equal to square root of mu naught square so that is mu square root of mu naught into square root of mu naught so we can cancel square root of mu naught here so e y by h z is equal to square root of mu naught by epsilon naught so now after substituting mu naught and epsilon naught that is fixed value of mu naught epsilon naught that is 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 and epsilon naught is 8.852 into 10 power 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 if we substitute these two values in this equation our final value of uh, intrinsic impedance in free space we are getting it as e y by h z is equal to 376.7 ohms okay since it is impedance its unit unit of uh, assigned unit of impedance is ohms so this was the whole derivation of intrinsic impedance that is e y by h z relationship between e y by h z in free space okay
so this is the expression uh, natu uh, real expression in medium okay using the same expression in free space by, by considering the value of c as 1 by square root of mu naught epsilon naught we can uh, find the value fixed value of uh, intrinsic impedance that is 376.7 ohms okay so this value you should not be forgetting this is a fixed value okay for intrinsic impedance in free space using the uniform plane wave and uh, velocity of light propagation so this is the fixed value of intrinsic impedance you should not be forgetting that is 376.7 ohms okay so this was all about uh, the whole concept of uh, uniform plane wave wave equation wave propagation okay so that's all for this session hope you like this session and uh, hope you understood some of the concepts and its derivation because this derivation is very very important in this derivation only they would be asking multiple type of questions with some twisted elements so I have explained this in detail so please like share subscribe and comment down your opinion about how you understood this concept and please uh, uh, share it with your closest friends neighbors or anybody okay please support our channel to be growing very faster because we provide natural content to you all